all right so because my fly sky i6x is damaged i have no other option but to use my th9x which is my backup radio obviously this radio is outdated and no one should buy it in today's time especially when you can buy the i6x and use it with open tx and express lrs but for the time being i will be using this radio and because this does not support telemetry if i'm flying my fpv quad i want to see the rssi on my on-screen display and here's the receiver that i got with this radio and even with the i6x i got this fsi a10b receiver so i can flash Clarix firmware on this that will basically display the rssi on a particular channel and then we can assign that in the receiver tab in beta flight and see the rssi on the ost but along with that there's another fix which might help some of you guys especially if you have the fsrm003 fly sky module and another reason why i'm making this video is because recently i have caught a few comments about this uh, transmitter module and some people have bought the new fly sky st8 radio transmitter which comes with the ant protocol and if you are a fly sky user there is a chance that you will have a lot of the old receivers with you which support the automatic frequency hopping digital system version 1 and 2 and the ant protocol is different from the protocol other radios work with so to use old receivers with the st8 fly sky recommends that you use this module but one big problem this module has is that it does not remember the receiver id so every time you bind to a new receiver the module will basically forget the first receiver and uh, you basically have to keep binding the receiver every time you switch from one module to another and to fix that what we can do is we can assign a single receiver id to all the receivers that we have so basically what i mean is so i have two fsi 10 b receivers with me and one x6p receiver and if i edit the receiver id and set it the same for all three receivers i can basically bind this module to all the receivers at the same time and control them i would only have to bind them once and after that the module will always bind to the receiver and that way we can fix the problem where you would have to bind the module to the receiver every other time so let's see how to do that so first i'll open up the receiver i've already removed the two screws on the back side so on the fsi a10b receiver you will see that you have a few connections on this side if i flip it we can read the labels for individual connection so here we have 3.3 volt ground SWDAT which is uh, data then you have the clock SWCLK and the reset connection so you can either solder a few jumper wires to the receiver and connect it to the S-Link device or use these pin headers and use those I used these and I connected the S-Link device to the receiver here I have a picture of that and after that we will edit the hex file and make a few changes in that so let's switch over to the computer alright so to flash the RSSI firmware on the FSI A10B receiver uh, go to this website I've also linked this in the description so you can click on that so cleric k fly sky rx firmware rssi mod and i've actually made a video on this topic in which i actually used a x6p receiver and here we can see all the supported receivers so if you have a receiver from this list either from fly sky or turnergy you can flash the rssi firmware and use it so if you click on this FlySky RX firmware 
and here you have all the firmware files for every receiver so because i'm working with the fsi a10b receiver and i'll be using sbus i'll download this channel 14 file if you plan to use ppm then just use the channel 8 firmware file and on this page you can see the connection diagram for every receiver so here we have the diagram for for the xxp receiver followed by ia6p here they don't have a picture of the fsi a10b receiver but i'll post the picture and you can see it now so here's the debug port on the fsi a10b receiver and like i said before i have used a few pin headers to connect the jumper wires and after that connect the receiver to the s-link device and launch stm utility software so first thing what you should do is uh, change the address and the size field to the numbers i've displayed over here and if you get this cannot read memory then just disable the readout protection so click on target option bytes and set the readout protection to level zero and click on apply and then reconnect the s-link device to the computer so once the readout protection is disabled set the address and the size to the numbers i've displayed and then click on save as to save the existing firmware on the receiver just to create a backup of the original firmware in case something goes wrong and you want to restore the original firmware back on the receiver so save it somewhere safely and once that's done we can now flash the rssi firmware so click on program and verify and select the rssi firmware file and then click on start and once that's completed successfully we can disconnect the st link device and now we have flashed the rssi firmware on the fsi a10b receiver so now we can get the rssi reading on our on-screen display while we are flying the quad